Okay, welcome to another tutorial video. We are going to be going over convertible notes for startups in this lesson. For all the files and resources here, you'll want to go to our venture capital page and then convertible notes there. This is a long URL, so I will pin this in the comments and you can just access it right there. This is another excerpt or sample from our venture capital growth equity modeling course. You'll recall that a while back, we did this comparison or this bit of a debate between Paul Graham and Fred Wilson about safe notes for startups, with Paul Graham advocating for them, at least back in 2013, and then Fred Wilson taking the opposite perspective and saying that they're normally not good for startups. But in addition to safe notes and priced equity rounds, there is another alternative that has actually been around for quite a long time, which is convertible notes for startups. Now, to be clear, we're not talking about convertible bonds here. We actually have a separate tutorial a crash course on convertible bonds for large public companies. We're talking about convertible notes here that startups would use to finance themselves when they have very little revenue or they're not at all profitable yet. Convertible notes for startups are closer to safe notes, but some of the mechanics and nuances differ a little bit. And we'll go through those here and do a full side-by-side -side comparison to safe notes. As usual, I'm gonna start with the two or three minute version. And then if you want more detail or more of a walkthrough in Excel, you can keep watching and we'll go through that. So with a convertible note, the startup raises cash from investors. It gets the cash, but it does not get diluted up front because it does not issue any new shares initially when the convertible note first becomes outstanding. Also, just like with a safe note, there is no specific valuation set in this round. Unlike the safe note though, a convertible note has interest attached. Now, normally this interest is accrued to the loan principal, sort of like paid in kind or pick interest in a leveraged buyout, for example. And there is a maturity date as well. So a convertible note is true debt. It has a clear spot in the capital structure. It has a higher claim to the assets than the equity investors, even the preferred equity investors. And the potential dilution from this convertible note is higher. The reason the potential dilution is higher than with a safe note is because of the fact that the convertible note balance typically increases over time as a direct result of the accrued interest that they get, which means that the convertible note investors potentially get more shares upon conversion. Let's go to Excel and take a quick look at this. So we have a seed round right here where the convertible note holders invest 2 million. There's a 20% conversion discount and a $10 million valuation cap. Also, there is a 10% accrued interest rate, and there are two years in between the C round and the Series A round. There are no shares initially granted in the C round, but then in the Series A round, the convertible note principal by the time of this round, two years after the C round, is actually higher than the 2 million because they get 10% accrued interest in each year. So instead of only having 2 million, they actually have 2.4 million now. And what that means is that if you look at the shares that they get, factoring in the cap, or discount and this higher balance, they get more like 403,000 shares. Whereas if they did not have the accrued interest at all, they would only have the original 2 million right here. And so they get more like 333,000 shares and they would end up owning only about 12% of the company versus 14% of the company when we factor in the accrued interest on this convertible note, as you can see right here in the cap table. So that is the basic difference here. Now, if we were to make a comparison table as I've done here in PowerPoint, a lot of the features are the same because with convertible notes and safe notes, in both cases, you defer the valuation, new shares are not initially granted, they are both faster and cheaper than traditional equity, and you could have a valuation cap, a valuation discount, or both on both of these. Where it starts to differ is in the bottom part of the table because you don't have interest rates or maturity date with safe notes, but you do with convertible notes. The conversion triggers are a little bit different. A priced round could trigger a conversion for the convertible notes, but other triggers are also possible. If there is an early exit before either one of these converts, you could get a full repayment, but again, it's treated a little bit differently. And sometimes with safe notes, it's a bit less likely depending on how they're structured. If there's a company shutdown or failure, the safe note investors are probably gonna lose everything. The convertible note investors are probably not going to get back everything, but since they are debt investors, lenders, they might get back a little bit of their initial principal. The dilution potential, as we just showed you, is definitely higher with a convertible note because of the accrued interest component. And then the use cases are also a little bit different. Safe notes are really for seed rounds when the company doesn't really have much. Convertible notes are a little bit more like venture debt in some cases and could be used as bridge loans depending on the size of the priced equity rounds. So that's the short version. Let's now go into a little bit more detail and we'll go through individual parts of this Excel file. 
So I'm gonna start with convertible notes in a seed round, then we'll look at the conversions in the series A with an options pool, and I'll walk you through the math and the formulas there. Then we'll do a side-by-side -side comparison between a convertible note and a safe note. And then we'll talk about whether a startup should consider using either one of these or whether neither one is really ideal in the current environment. So in a seed round, with the cap table, nothing really changes. The co-founders and employees have their shares and options, and that's it. The seed investors, if they're investing via a convertible note, do not get any shares in the round. The valuation cap tells you the max valuation they can get their shares at in the next price round. The conversion discount tells you the discount to the share price they can get their shares at in the next price round. So in this case, you can see it very clearly here. We have a $2 million investment, but in the cap table, nothing actually changes. The ownership stays exactly the same. Even the values of the shares and options owned by the founders and employees here stays the same because no new shares or options are granted to anyone in this initial seed round. Now, when you get to the series A round, this is where things start to differ. So I have a whole set of steps laid out here. We're going to assume as in the safe example that the series A investors invest 5 million at a $10 million pre-money valuation. So they expect to own 33%. And I have the steps laid out here. You have to calculate the price per share, determine the price per share that the convertible note investors get, calculate the new shares for each group in this round, and then factor in the options pool and gross up the total share count based on these free options given out to the employees. Then you link everything in the cap table and calculate the ownership percentages. And as a result of all this, the Series A investors will own less than they would have without the convertible note. But let's go into Excel and step through all this. So the post-money valuation is just the investment size plus the pre-money valuation, so $15 million here. Now we could calculate the share price in a couple ways, but I think the simplest is to take the pre-money valuation and divide by the total number of shares that existed before this round. So the 1.3 million up here. Now, the next thing is that for the convertible note, we need to look at the original principal and then factor in the accrued interest. So here we started with 2 million, but then we have the 10% interest per year. So I'll multiply by one plus 10% and raise it to the power of two because we have two years in between the seed round and the series A round. We don't know the maturity, but we're assuming that it's probably two or three years, something in that range. So we have 2.4 million now. As with the safe note, we can calculate the purchase price per share based on either the discount or the cap, and then we'll apply whichever one is better for the convertible note investors. So if we do it based on the discount, we go up and take the series A price per share, we multiply by one minus the 20% discount right here. Now, if we do it based on the valuation cap, instead we go up and take the valuation cap right here, so the 10 million, and then we divide by the total number of shares that existed before this round. So we're essentially saying that this is the most that they can pay for their shares. And it's 750 here, which is the same as the Series A share price. So you can already tell by looking at this that the convertible note investors will choose the discount method instead because it's clearly better for them to buy the shares at $6 per share rather than 750 per share in this case. To formalize that though, we can take the minimum between these two and that gives us $6. Now for the shares for each group in this round, for the seed investors, we can take their convertible note principal and then we can divide by the purchase price per share that they're going to use or apply in this round. For the series A investors, we're going to take their $5 million investment and then we'll divide by the series A share price. We'll add these up and we get to about 1.07 million shares. For the valuations, we take the shares and then multiply by the series A share price. And then we can add these up and then we can also look at the multiple of invested capital. We can take the valuation and divide by the $2 million initial investment. And here, the 5 million divided by their $5 million initial investment. We can see that because of the accrued interest and the substantial discount, the convertible note investors get quite a lot more than their original investment in this round. Now for the options, we have to go up and get the non-option shares to start with. So the shares owned by the founders right here and then owned by the seed investors in this round, even though it's zero, just to be safe, we'll take this. And then we want to get the number that actually get created or purchased in this round for both groups, the seed investors and the series A investors. Now the employees are getting 20% of the company for free effectively. So we take this number, the non-option shares, and we divide by one minus 20% to gross this up to a higher number. And then to figure out the number that go to the employees, we take this total, we subtract the non-option shares right here, and then we subtract whatever they owned in the previous round. So the 133,000 right here, and this is how many new options they get, about 434,000. 
What this all means is that if you look at the post money valuation in this round, it's no longer the 15 million that we expected in the beginning. Instead, it's actually the total number of shares times the share price in the round, the $7.50. And so we get to a post money valuation more like 21.3 million. And it's because of the fact that the convertible note investors got these shares in this round based on their previous investment. And also because of the option pool in this case and how these free shares were granted to the employees in this round. So that's how it works. And you can see down here in the cap table, the Series A investors only own about 24%, whereas they expected to own about 33%. You can also see how the founders here get to loon quite a bit. They go from 90% down to 42%. So on this next slide, I'm just summing up what we did here. One other thing I wanna mention is that in these conversions, sometimes there is a compromise method called the, called the dollars invested method, which I also have in Excel. And essentially the idea here is that we determine the post money valuation differently and we get to a lower number by doing it this way. We take the investment size, the pre-money valuation, and then we just add the convertible note principle then we subtract the investment in this round, the convertible note value and the employee options pool. And so we get to a lower pre-money valuation. And as a result of this method and how we calculate the shares a little bit differently, the seed investors end up owning 17%. The series A investors end up owning about 29%. And in a method like this, the co-founders get even more diluted. So there are other ways to calculate the, the dilution and to reach a compromise between the two investor groups in a round like this. And the dollars invested method here is just a simple example of one such method. Now, if we do a side-by-side -side comparison of the convertible note versus the safe note option, clearly the convertible note creates more, more dilution. Because if you go to our Excel file here, you can see that the seed investors, when it's a safe note, own 333,000 shares, 12% of the company. With the convertible note though, if you go up and look at it, they own over 400,000 shares and 14% of the company. So that much is obvious, but this is a little bit deceptive because the convertible note has some other advantages over the safe note. For example, in the case of a liquidation or company shutdown, the treatment is much clearer, it's debt, so it's senior to all the preferred equity. It's also senior to all the common equity. So they get first claim to the company's assets and the proceeds in such a sale. Also, convertible notes can be used in more cases and sometimes they do act a little bit more like bridge loans, similar to venture debt. Safe notes by contrast are mostly for seed rounds. So now to the last part, is either one of these worth it for startups? This is very opinionated, but I would say no, not really. I think maybe 10 or 15 years ago, you could make a case because of the fact that priced equity rounds were more complicated and more expensive. Convertible notes definitely favor the investors more than the safe note because of the fact that there's a full maturity and repayment required. There are different conversion triggers. There's the accrued interest. They are senior to safe notes and preferred and common equity. So in that sense, they are definitely better for investors. But if the startup is looking for a bridge loan, I think venture debt is actually better in between price rounds because it creates almost no dilution and sometimes no dilution at all. Seed rounds can be done with a simple priced equity raise. It's not really that much more complicated or expensive these days. So in my opinion, the advantages of both safe notes and convertible notes have diminished over time as investors have gotten better about standardizing the terms in these priced equity rounds. So that's about it. Let's do a quick recap and summary. Convertible notes in the seed route. Nothing changes in the cap table. There are no new shares granted. The company raises money, but that's it. In the series A round, you have to go in and go through the process that we did here. We did it in a very simple way, but we looked at the principal after the accrued interest. We looked at the share price based on the discount and cap and took whichever one was better for the investor group. And then we assumed a full conversion to shares based on that. We then grossed up the total number of shares to reflect the 20% options pool here. For the side-by-side -side comparison, convertible notes definitely create more dilution or have the potential to do so versus a safe note. So in that sense, they're worse, but they also make a lot of things clearer, especially if the company shuts down and then distribute the proceeds to investors. I don't think either one of these is great for startups necessarily, but if they really want to move quickly and they really like one of these for some reason, they can certainly do it. I would say the main advantage of convertible notes is that they're just more favorable for the investors, but not necessarily for the startup. So that's it for this lesson. Hopefully now you know a little bit more about convertible notes and how they compare to safe notes when it comes to raising funds for startups.